We're going to sew on a button. I'm going to show you two button styles. The first is just the basic button application where the button is flat to the material and the other one will be a shank button. It's where the button is slightly raised. You'll see that more on outerwear and coats. I always like to hide my knot. So even though this is the good side of the material, if I can hide my knot underneath the button, then it's not even going to show as much on the reverse side. So you can see how with my needle I've just pricked a little bit of the material. My knot now will be underneath my button. When we sew a button on, we I've seen people sew buttons on where they put the needle through the material and then they're pulling it on this side then they got to put it back through the material. That's much too time consuming as well as it's just a lot of guesswork trying to get back up to the other side. We will have our strings crisscross on our buttonholes. You could easily have them go from side to side. That's a, a perfectly acceptable button style also. I'm going to do the crisscross. So now that I've put the button and my needle through, I've got my needle back down through the opposite hole. I'm going to pick some of that material again, pull it off to the side, and you can see how with the six ply, we already have like six layers of thread up through the empty hole, down through the, the opposite side, just prick some of your material. You can see how we're just taking a little bit. Even on this side, the work is still looking nice and neat. If it's a button that is decorative, you could be done right now. This is a used button, so we want to add just a little bit more security, so we're going to go over both those once again. One, up through this, down through here, just prick the material. So now to end, I always take my threads, wind it around the button a couple of times, three times. It gives it a nice clean work, gives it a bit more reinforcing. And then to tie a knot, because I don't want a knot on the other side, I'm going to take my needle and thread, and we're going to pick a little bit of the material or the thread, and do a one, two, three. Three tight little back stitches. That's going to secure my button and the thread. Trim. And now the button is done. We're going to show you that same technique but with a shank button. The only difference is the button will be raised above the surface. Like I said, you'll use this when you have outerwear. We start the same through one of the holes. We're going to drop it down back into the material, pick up some of the material. Now where this is flush with the shank button, we want to release that a little so that there's a small space. Usually about not quite even half an inch, just a little shy of half an inch. Make sure we don't pull that tight up through the top, down through, in the same spot. We can actually keep our fingers underneath at this point. That will keep that spacing that we need. Since this is a shank button, it will get some wear on the outerwear, so we are going to double that. Make sure we have our spacing. And now for sure we're going to wrap the shank. And you can see how we have this nice tight wrapped. And we just knot off this button the same as the other one. A couple of stitching into back stitches. Two. Three, trim, and you can see the difference how this is a raised button 
the shank compared to our flat. Another closure that we apply quite frequently and is your basic snap. So I'm going to show you how we're going to sew that on. That's quickly, but also neat, nice and neat. I'm using the four ply with the snap just because it doesn't take as much pressure. Also, you have less threading that's going to get into a knot. We'll, same concept with the button. We are going to hide our knot. So put the needle thread so we just have a prick on that side. Take our little tiny, tiny snap, put up through one of the holes, and we're actually going to drop down through the material and come across to the other side of the snap at this point. Let's see if we can get this held into place so you can see what I'm doing. See that little red mark? That's where our first stitch is. Now we are going to come up the opposite hole, drop down into the material right by that and come up to the other the side, side hole. There's four holes here. Sometimes finding that is the hardest part. Drop down right by the hole. Come up to the opposite side. And you can see now how we have that nice neat application. I am going to finish this snap off doing the same three back stitches in the same spot to secure my threads. Two and three. We have one half of our snap on and it's nice and neat on this side. Let's join our other half of the snap. It's going to be done the same way. If when we have a knot, we have a long tail, let's trim that off. That way it doesn't peek out underneath our work. Prick the material. It's about an eighth of an inch of material pricked. Come up through one of the holes. Lie it flat. Right down in by the hole we came in. Go to the opposite side. Aim towards one of the empty holes on the side. Down and underneath to the final hole. And now we do our three little tight back stitches to secure the thread. You can see how I'm using my thimble to push my needle through. And now we had both sides of the snap applied. And We're going to move on to hook and eye. We use a lot of hook and eyes on dresses. Once again, we just want a nice neat application. We, the hook and eye is not, have, does not have enough surface, surface space for us to hide the knot. Generally, when we do a hook and eye, we will hide our knot underneath the nearest seam or fold. So I'm actually just going to come up from the bottom for the hook and eye. And we're going to apply the hook first. 
Same thing, we want to keep it nice and neat. We're going to tack the back ends first. And you may even want to do this with a six ply thread. One, two. I've done a couple. I'm going to come up to the second side. We're going to do a nice little tack to the second side. And now if we were just to finish the hook and eye that way, it's going to lift up. So we're actually going to tack down the hook by sliding your needle underneath your material, coming up by the hook, wrapping your thread around the hook, drop down into the material, pick up that little bit of thread material there. And this is actually where we're going to do our three back stitches to end this, to tie the knots. Two and three. And you can see how nice and neat that would be, especially when it's done in the matching thread color. And the final part we're going to do is sewing on the hook. And when we do that similarly, we're going to bring up towards the top because we would hide our knot. Do a couple of uh, stitches to tack down the two back loops. Oops. So now we want to also tack down the eye part so that it doesn't lift up. I like to do that with a couple, drop down to the back, come up to the top of where this little loop meets. We're going to do one little security stitch here and once I pull that through you'll see where that is. See how that stitch is right at the top here? And we're going to do another one on the other side. And you can see now how that holds that down so it's not lifting up. That's about all we need to do to secure that. And we do our little back stitches to knot and finish off this application. One, two, three.